Right. Okay, that's fine. Now we can imagine that there will be several several operations we might want to perform that might need more than one argument. So for instance, if our operation needs us to have uh, x1 and x2, and let's say the result we wanted was x1 squared plus x2 squared, then you see what I've done here is simply added on the x2 to the argument list. So y we can have as many arguments in, in the argument space as we like, and this will execute just fine. Now MATLAB will require us to provide at least two arguments to this command here. So this will no longer work if we give it just the one, one input. So if we, if we try to run this with just the three, you can see that it complains input argument x2 is undefined. So let's define x1 and x2. Right, just a just a point here that this uh, it's detected that we have sent in one argument at least, but uh, the second argument it's so it says specifically x2 is undefined. So let's just send in that as being the value of x1, and let's send in a value for uh, x2 of being 1. So that has executed successfully. Let's just not suppress that output. Okay, so we get the result 10 there. Right, that's because I took off the 1. Right, if you look at uh, how I've amended this function, I removed the plus 1 and I added in the x1 squared plus x2 squared. So uh, 3 squared plus 1 squared is 10. Right, and obviously I can reuse this function as I like. So that's a function with more than one argument and we can have as many as we like. We can also imagine that a function might need more than one output variable. For instance, y might take on, uh, th there might be two y variables, let's say y1 and y2. So y1 might be that output, whereas y2 might be x1, let's say, divided by x2. So to to code this, we simply add to the output space for this function. And in MATLAB, the syntax to do that is to use square brackets there and to provide the names of the output variables. So if we were to say y1, comma y2, then it will return for us in the output space uh, these values in those positions. So the first position will have y1 and the second one will have y2 and let's look at the results here. So if we issue this statement, then you see it's returned just the one output. So the default in using a function is that it will return just one output unless we make it possible, unless we assign uh, there to be more than one output. So if we were to say here, let's say a1 was the output for that. So let's say a1 equals that then we just get the single number going into A1. And then if we want to capture both outputs, we, we use the square brackets here, A1 comma A2, and it creates, hmm. so switching over into the command window, let's let's first create one variable output or rather let's just run it as it is let's say we were to issue calculate from x 3.5 then we see it returns answer of just being 34 that's because by default MATLAB will simply ignore the other outputs and create only one answer right by default MATLAB for every statement is only creating one answer variable so similarly here if we were to say a1 equals that it's only going to create one output for us, a1 is 34. So in order to obtain the other variables, right, in order to get to the y1 and the y2, we can use the square brackets again, a1 comma a2 is equal to calculate y from x for 3 comma 5. And there you see, now we have the two outputs, A1 and A2, 34 and 0 0.6. We notice also that we've used different variables here as to what we defined here, right? That's because, as we said, 
the function is something that's general. So this function is going to return uh, two variables which it understands to be what we've created here. So within this function we understand y1 and y2 and those are just returned as outputs from that function. And then in our main program it's up to us to decide what variables we want to return those values to. So A1 and A2 is what we chose to return it to and th those are our outputs to that function. Notice also the distinction between the uh, output and the input. We said that we had to provide all the inputs that the function required. So we have to provide this function with these inputs here but it's optional whether we want both uh, values coming out here. Right? And we can imagine that this function might not operate, we might not be able to perform all the operations here at all if we don't have all the required information. But the function is supplying us with information and we may or may not want all of that information. So that's functions in MATLAB, that's the syntax for it. Your list of outputs goes here, your list of inputs goes here, and the function name goes through here. We we are showing the convention that uh, these function files occur separately, so we have separate files for each, um, we have a separate m file for each function, but uh, it's not necessary to do that. Um, we can use what are called inline functions and so on, um, and you can look that up. If you want to use inline functions, you, you can uh, specify that the function does end there and, and you can list your other functions below that. Um, so strictly speaking, we should have this end here, but when we, uh, we have a single function stored in a single file and that's the only thing that's there, then we don't really need that end. But anyway, if we have it in there, it's not going to hurt anyone, so that's there. Alright, so much for the creation of functions.